Greetings everyone, welcome to the second part of the series where we are doing penal code for aspirants, those who want to know legal passages or legal questions and they want to know the fundamentals of criminal law. Now we are going to do the Bayer Act reading because I believe that if a student is able to read the Bayer Act thoroughly and is well versed with the way we are taught law in our law school, I think most of the solved while comprehending legal. So continuing with our recurrent lecture, we are going to discuss the nation part. Please understand that in Indian Penal Code, these are not called as definitions. Rather, you can say that they are general explanations. So usually what happens in a Bayer Act, Section 2, जो कोई भी normal जो Bayer Acts होती हैं, Section 2 usually definition कर रहता है. But IPC में ये Section 2 में definition नहीं है. अलग-अलग provisions define कर रहे हैं. ज़्यादा complicated हो रहा है क्या? चलो, अभी इस fact को रहने देते हैं. अभी Court of Justice Section 20 जो है, वहां से हम लोग इस lecture को आगे लेके जा रहे हैं. Section 20 में Court of Justice के बारे में define कर रहा है, that एक judge, जो कि empowered है by law to act judicially alone or a body of judges which is empowered by law to act judicially as a body when such judge or body of judges is acting judicially. This is important that the court of justice wherever used means that it can be a single judge or it can be a body of judges. And when they are doing their action for which they have been appointed, Judicially, they are called as court of justice. In illustration, it is clearly explained that even a panchayat, which is acting under Regulation 8, 1816 of the Madras Court, if the panchayat is given the power to pass any verdict or order uh, with respect to whatever matters in that village, civil matters or criminal matters, if the parliament allows, right, then they are basically court of justice while determining the suits it is given here section 21 is very interesting is very elaborative because it tells you public servants now from the previous lecture you need to understand the difference between public servant and the difference between servants of government there is a basic difference between public servant and servants of government so, every public servant would be a servant of government, but every staff of the government servant. So, we need to understand in IP, public servant word is used, it is used in what context? So, the words public servant denote a person falling under a So, their descriptions are uh, second. I mean, it starts with the second. So, you will understand that every commissioned officer in the military, navy or air force of India is a public servant. Third, every judge, including any person by himself or as a member of any body of persons, any adjudicatory function. Persons who are judges performing any adjudicatory functions are also public servants. कंपनियों में जो अब कंपनी बिक रही होती है दिवालिया घोषित हो जाती है तो उसके एसेट्स सब बेच रहे होते हैं उनका असेसमेंट करते हैं वो जज होता है एक उसको लिक्विडेटर कहते हैं लिक्विड का मतलब होता है कानून की भाषा में वेयर एवर यू हियर द वर्ड लिक्विड इट्स रिलेट टू मनी इट्स रिलेट टू कैश ठीक है यू विल ऑलवेज रिमेंबर दिस सो एनी लिक्विडेटर एनी रिसीवर और कमिश्नर whose duty it's as such an officer to investigate or report on any matter of law or fact, to make, authenticate, keep any document or to take charge, dispose any property, execute any judicial process, administer any oath, interpret or preserve order in the court, every person specially authorized by a court of justice to perform any such duties. Now it is related to the court process. First of all, the judges, right, are obviously uh, public servants. Now, whatever officers are, 
acting in the color of their duty and they are acting under the direction of a judge right would be construed as a public servant so these are the kinds of functions that you can understand the court provides liquidator receiver commissioner koi report prepare karna investigate karna kisi bhi law ya fact ke matter pe koi bhi document ko banana bulana राइट right? रखना प्रिजर्व करना या किसी प्रॉपर्टी को अपने कस्टडी में लेना उसको डिस्पोज करना कानून व्यवस्था में कोर्ट के द्वारा दिए गए आदेशों को दूसरों को इम्प्लीमेंट करवाना एग्जीक्यूट करवाना किसी को शपथ ग्रहण कराना और इंटरप्रेट और टू प्रिजर्व ऑर्डर इन द कोर्ट एनी सच पर्सन एवरी पर्सन हु इज ऑथराइज बाय कोर्ट ऑफ जस्टिस इज अ पब्लिक सर्वेंट Every juryman, assessor, a member of panchayat, assisting a court of justice, or any public servant is also a public servant. So it also includes the local level, local self-government bodies. Uh, every arbitrator or other person to whom any cause or matter has been referred for a decision or report by any court of justice or by any other competent public authority. So any arbitrator or any other authority, right, who is listening to a particular cause of matter. or listening to a particular or is going to prepare a particular report or is going to give a particular decision and they have been particularly assigned that authority that uh, role by either a court or any public authority public servant Every office by virtue of which he is so whenever friend someone to whosoever gets finds the person may get a hold of that person and inform the police so that the police can come later on and catch the person so any such person who is acting in that color of duty right who holds any of by virtue of which he is empowered to take place or keep any person in confinement is also a public servant so it means that he should be he must be authorized by law right authorized by law means authorized also by competent authority to do so so the word holds any office is very important because when you office which means that office statutorily recognized or that particular office is competent enough it has been created rule of law or under a certain law then only it can be called as an office person who is holding any office by virtue of which power to take place or keep any person in confinement is a public servant now coming to the 8th 9th 10th as well as 11th and 12th part so all these 12 types are important for us to understand whenever we are trying to understand who a public servant could be so every officer of the government whose duty it is as such officer to prevent offences to give information of offences bring offenders to justice protect public health safety or inconvenience now in this it clearly tells you that any officer of the government and every officer of the government right who is under duty as an officer as such officer under the government to prevent information bring offenders protect public health safety convenience uh, so it tells you that even the police as well as the municipal bodies as, if, as well as the officers because they are trying to keep public health safety and convenience traffic police everybody is a public servant with respect to ninth uh, definition every officer whose duty it is as such officer to take receive keep extend any property on behalf of the government to make any survey assessment contract on behalf of the government execute any revenue process investigate or to report any matter affecting the pecuniary interest of the government financial related to money right make authenticate keep any document relating to the pecuniary of the government prevent infraction of any law prevent infraction of the law for the protection of the pecuniary interest of the government is a public servant now in ninth definition whatever we have read is related to revenue and proceeds of the government
now by revenue and proceeds of the government we simply mean that there is an officer who is duty bound to act on behalf of the government and what matter could be the matter could be associated with respect to property with respect to any revenue process with respect to investigation of any matter where the financial interest of the government is at question and they must be authorized by the government this is very important because again and again it is important written that on behalf of the government so if the government has given somebody this particular authority then only he will be called as a public servant otherwise he will not be called as a public servant which means that if you assume office if you assume a responsibility uh, not by under law but you assumed it all by your own self considering that it was your moral duty to look into a particular matter and then subsequently inform the government then you are not a public servant you are simply a citizen and that is the differentiation we need to understand because every public servant would be duly authorized under law 10th right so this definition i mean this definition of public servant is definitely going to take a lot of time because a lot of interpretation thing is involved here while we are reading this so stay patient with it right it is for your own good now every officer whose duty is it is as such officer to take receive keep extend any property make any survey assessment to levy any rate or tax for any secular common purpose of any village town district to make authenticate keep any document for the ascertaining of the rights of the people of any village town or district now it is called it is basically talking about the land officers the land as well as whatever whosoever is the revenue officer because it tells you that tax collection and everything is also important whosoever is collecting tax for any common secular purpose for in any village town or district right who is going to levy any rate or tax and who is going to authenticate or keep any document for rights of people of any village town or district so land and revenue officers basically uh, have this kind of responsibility in the 11th uh, clause you will come to know that every persons every person who holds any office in virtue of which he is empowered to prepare publish maintain revise electoral roll or to conduct an election or part of an election now election here means that election officers so whosoever is duty bound either uh, by con virtue of constitution by virtue of guidelines by election commission of state or uh, union or by government right or will be called as a public servant for that matter uh, if 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 a government teacher if a government teacher right is empowered to uh, act uh, is is in a duty during election will be called as a public servant in the service or pay of the government or remunerated by fees or commission for the performance of any public duty by the government now example government teacher government teacher government doctor government teacher government doctor pradhan right each one of them is in the color of their duty where they are getting payment for the service right in the service of the government or under the pay of the government or you are remunerated by certain fees or commission for the performance of any public duty by the government in the service of any local authority a corporation established by or under a central province state act or a government company as defined in section 617 of the government act this is also telling you that even public sector enterprises psus public sector undertakings whether it is of state or whether it is of union uh, the officers employed in it right uh, are also called as public servants so in illustration it tells you that if there is a municipal commissioner he will be constituted he will be uh, to be a public servant the persons falling under any of the above descriptions are public servants whether appointed by the government or not so it doesn't matter who appoints them if their role and duties fits according to that definition that those 12 conditions we have read above then they are called as public servant you will remember this the second explanation to this particular section entails that wherever the words public servant occur they shall be understood of every person who is in actual possession of the situation of a public servant whether legal defect there may be in his right to hold the situation for example if there is any public servant who is accidentally in a, in a particular scene is is in a in a particular condition and maybe he is not authorized or maybe he does not have jurisdiction to look into that matter so even if that is the case right and you are present over there you will be a public servant so you cannot just ignore or uh, just you can say let go of the pressure that is on you 
by saying that you were not uh, responsible for what whatever what was going on there because it was not your duty but if you are present over there you will be called to be a public servant it doesn't matter if there is any legal defect or there may be in his right to hold that situation so you might think that the other case could be that for certain person you might think that he is not the right person he is not the right authority but if he is there if he is sitting there and he, his duty could be fitted into those 12 boxes which we have studied before he will be called as a public servant explanation 3 election denotes all sorts of elections uh, for the purpose of selecting members of any legislative municipal or other public authority whatever character the method of selection which is by or under any law prescribed as by election so it tells you that all sorts of elections officers under duty would be called as a public servant so that solve for the definition of the public servant there is a state amendment rajasthan had made a certain amendment in section 21 where it has added the 13th clause which states that public body also includes university board education body established by central or state act and the provisions of constitution by the government and any local authority is also a public authority every person employed or engaged by any public body in the conduct and supervision of any examination recognized or approved under any law so it is a simple amendment and see you see these definitions are so simple to understand yet they have been written in such a complicated fashion so we should never get be confused we should never get confused by the legal english the legal language rather it is very simple if you if you are able to break down that particular provision into hindi language and understand it uh section 22 now we are coming to important areas section 22 talks about movable property what is a movable property so the words movable property are intended to include corporeal property of every description corporeal property means physical properties of every description except land and things attached to the earth first exception so land is not a movable property these are two exceptions and whatever things are attached to the earth permanently fastened to anything which is attached to the earth so let's say if this is earth and this is a pole and this is a rod which is attached to the pole and let's say this is a hand pump right so this lever can be removed but this particular object a and object b cannot be removed object a and object b will not be called as movable property so you need to understand that things which are permanently are fastened to anything which is attached to the earth now uh, permanent fastened means it is impossible to remove it or if you remove it it is worthless so movable property means which are not attached to earth and which is not land right now we will understand this now section 23 is very important with respect to the definition part because it talks about wrongful gain a uh, wrongful gain and wrongful loss both are a criminal activity so wrongful gain means where you are gaining by unlawful means of property to which the person gaining is not legally entitled so first of all it is important that the means used to make any gain is unlawful because you are not legally entitled to gain that particular thing wrongful loss on the other side means that it is a loss by unlawful means of property to which the person losing it is legally entitled now you tell me what is the difference so whenever you are not in a position to make any profit or gain yet you make a profit or gain by doing that particular activity would be called as a wrongful gain you cannot sell railway tickets yet you sold railway tickets you are not legally entitled to sell railway tickets it would be considered the money that you earned from it would be considered as wrongful gain it might be also some other provisions of ipc but we are trying to understand that whatever you are doing is by unlawful means right you are not legally entitled for example bribery can also be called as a wrongful gain right you are not entitled to commit any bribery now when you do that wrongful gain because you are a government servant because you are a government servant and you are in a position to do that particular thing it is called as bribery but a private individual a company person who is taking money for doing the actions for which the salary is being paid to him would is no would not be called as bribery so please understand the difference that we are trying to understand the five root fundamentals 
now since because wrongful gain and wrongful loss is prohibited in ipc which it becomes a foundational stone for definitions of other offenses other types of offenses and wrongful loss means something that you were entitled to you are losing it and wrongful gain means something you were not entitled to yet you are gaining it losing wrongfully means any a person is said to gain wrongfully when such person retains wrongfully as well as such person acquires wrongfully right uh, a person is said to lose wrongfully when such a person is wrongfully kept out of any property as well as when such a person is wrongfully deprived of such a property and then they are stated that it's they are losing wrongfully so if your property is there and you are yet being kept out of that property you are not able to ride your car and all of that without any just cause justification and that that would be considered as a wrongful act and wrongful act you are the victim so you are losing wrongfully section 24 again is very very fundamental because it tells you what is the meaning of the word dishonestly now whenever you do anything whoever does anything with the intention of with the intention of causing wrongful gain to one person wrongful loss to another person is said to do that thing dishonestly now it is very important when you are looking into the word or the meaning of the word honesty so in law honesty means that it must be a rightful gain right if this is a rightful gain then it is called as honesty and if this must and there is there can be no rightful loss so it will will say that there is no wrongful loss and it is called as honesty so we are going backwards right so first we are trying to understand in honesty we means gain and loss in ipc the word honesty means gain and loss so whenever you do anything for wrongful gain or for wrongful loss you will are called as dishonest person in terms of ipc everywhere honesty you see honesty means ki kisi ka bura mat socho aur kisi ke sath bura mat karo kisi ka mat chheen ke khao kisi ka mat chheen ke khao ek alag tarah ka aparadh ho jata hai lekin the moment aapko keh rahe hain ki aap uska kuch galat karna cha rahe ho wo usko kehte hain honesty to wrongful gain aur wrongful loss isi tarike se section 25 mein fraudulently defined hai fraud kya hota hai a person is said to do a thing fraudulently if he does that thing with the intent to defraud but not otherwise fraudulently matlab dhokebaazi theek hai to koi bhi cheez fraudulently tab hoti hai jab usme intent hi fraud karne ka chhupa ho agar prank kar rahe hain to koi offense kiya aapne koi offense nahi hua क्यों क्योंकि आपका कोई भी व्यक्ति को परमानेंट फ्रॉड करना नहीं था आपका इंटेंशन नहीं ये नहीं था अगर इरादा ही गलत है तो फ्रॉड होगा तो यानी कि इंटेंशन की बात कहाँ पे आपने देखी फ्रॉड में देखी राइट रॉन्गफुल केस और रॉन्गफुल लॉन रॉन्गफुल गेन और रॉन्गफुल लॉस की बात आपने कहाँ देखी अपने ऑनेस्टली में देखी है ना और सेक्शन ट्वेंटी में रीजन टू बिलीव डिफाइन करता है वट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ द वर्ड रीजन टू बिलीव If a person is said to have a reason to believe a thing, if he has sufficient cause to believe that thing, but not otherwise. Sufficient cause again needs explanation, but it simply states that you need to have sufficient reasons. Sufficient reasons, and these reasons must be justified. When these reasons are justified, it is called as sufficient cause, and sufficient cause. the person is believed then reasons to believe so to understand the application of reasons to believe we need to understand we need to look into the other definitions also so we we'll look into that section 27 property in possession of wife clerk or servant when property is in the possession of a person's wife clerk or servant on the account of that person it is in that person's possession within the meaning of this code right so this is a very unique uh, principle it's a very good principle that when can you, when it can be stated that you are out of possession so you just can't be out of possession just because it is not present with you 
if it is if it is present with any of these three persons your wife clerk or servant on your behalf then it is said to be in your possession let us look at this explanation a person employed temporarily on a, on a, or on a particular occasion in the capacity of a clerk or servant is a clerk or servant within the meaning of this section now it tells you that your employment is whether temporary or permanent it does not matter you are acting on behalf of the person on account of the person and you are holding certain thing then you will be called as a clerk or servant in the meaning of this section and because you are possessing the property it will be stated like the owner also is in possession of the property so if two principles are given together then a particular factual situation can be created out of this and you might get confused so in simple words सिंपल भाषा में बोलें तो अगर आपकी बीवी आपके नौकर के पास कोई संपत्ति है जो आपकी है तो माना जाता है कि वो संपत्ति आपके प्रदेशन में है ये इससे फर्क नहीं पड़ता कि वो नौकर या वो क्लर्क को आपने परमानेंटली हायर किया था या वो टेम्प्रेरी सर्विस पे था कॉन्ट्रेक्चुअल बेसिस पे कुछ समय के लिए इट डज नॉट मैटर सेक्शन ट्वेंटी में काउंटर बताया है काउंटर का मतलब क्या होता है जिसको हम कहते हैं काउंटर मतलब जारी नकली A person is said to counterfeit who causes one thing to resemble another thing, right? Very first principle is very important. कि आप दिखा रहे हो कोई भी चीज अलग तरीके से उसको कोई दूसरा represent करके resemble करने का मतलब देखिए क्या होता है that you all are similar to something. ठीक है similar to something resemble. उसमें क्या intending है आपका intention क्या है By means of that resemblance to practice deception, chalava, right? Chalava, and and knowing it to be likely that deception will thereby be practiced. So, if you buy a knuckle note, है ना असली बता के सामान खरीद रहे हो तो आप क्या कर रहे हो counterfeit. ये चीज important है आपके लिए समझना. पहली चीज आपका resemblance होना जरूरी है. दूसरा वो रिजेम्बलेंस कराते समय आपका एक इंटेंशन था कि आपको डिसेप्शन कॉज करना है तो डिसेप्शन और रिजेम्बलेंस ये जो दो वर्ड्स हैं ये काउंटर फीट की डेफिनेशन में बेहद इंपॉर्टेंट है एक्सप्लेनेशन वन की बात करते हैं इट इज नॉट एसेंशियल टू काउंटर फीटिंग दैट द इमिटेशन शुड बी एग्जैक्ट इट इज नॉट एसेंशियल टू काउंटर फीटिंग दैट द इमिटेशन शुड बी एग्जैक्ट इट डज नॉट मैटर वेदर द नोट यूज नकली नोट एकदम परफेक्ट था या नहीं था राइट इमिटेशन एग्जैक्ट ना भी हो इट डज नॉट मैटर इंटेंशन इज मोर डेंजरस हियर एक्सप्लेनेशन टू वेन अ पर्सन कॉज इज वन थिंग टू रिजेंबल एन अदर थिंग एंड द रिजेंबलेंस इज सच दैट अ पर्सन माइट बी डिसीव्ड देयर बाय इट शैल बी प्रिज्यूम्ड अंटिल द कॉन्ट्ररी इज प्रूव्ड दैट द पर्सन सो कॉजिंग द वन थिंग टू रिजेंबल द अदर थिंग intended by means of that resemblance to practice deception or knew it to be likely that deception would thereby be practiced now it is a simple corollary to what we have studied in the main part it is just an extension it tells you that whenever you are trying to do so it tells you whenever a person causes one thing to resemble another thing and when you are showing it it is such that the person might be deceived thereby right it shall be presumed until the contrary is proved that the person so causing the one thing to resemble the other thing intended by means so if you have in a possession of a counterfeit note let's say let's say right and you know that this is a counterfeit note in your pocket and yet you go to a petrol pump you fuel your bike and you try to hand over the counterfeit note to the uh, person who has fueled your bike to the servant of the petrol pump and by that by doing that you cannot take a later on excuse that you didn't know that this this was a counterfeit note right uh, because if it would have been a counterfeit note and you knew it why would you try it to pass it on to someone else you might try to keep it away right uh, but if you are doing it and let's say you have that note by accident all by accident you come to know that yaar ye to nakli note mujhe pakda ke chala gaya aur tumne us nakli note ko ja ke kahin pe chalane ki koshish ki 
तो ऐसी सिचुएशन में ये प्रिज्यूम कर लिया जाएगा राइट right? ये प्रिज्यूम कर लिया जाएगा कि आपका इंटेंशन था डिसेप्शन कराने का डिसेप्शन कॉज कराने का इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज सी दिस इज वॉट सेपरेट्स अ फेयर एक्टिविटी फ्रॉम अ क्रिमिनल एक्टिविटी राइट तो यहां पे आपको पहले ही कह दे रहा है कि अगर आपने ऐसा किया तो इंटेंशन क्या होगा आपका प्रिज्यूम कर लेंगे कि गलत ही था ये चीज यहां पे कह रहे हैं सेक्शन ट्वेंटी नाइन में डॉक्यूमेंट डिफाइन किया गया है 